Welcome back friends. Uh, many days later we are again back for the bioinformatics tutorials and uh, I've been uh, getting many of the requests for making advanced videos on bioinformatics. So I've just uh, completed in the previous uh, session that only basics of bioinformatics. Now in this uh, section we'll be talking about some moderately uh, difficult kind of bioinformatics tools and techniques. Then finally I'll be making another module. In that module we'll be talking about the complex uh, complex and many more difficulties of bioinformatics and those stuffs or advanced stuffs. So let's begin with <coughs> uh, this particular session and in this particular uh, module we'll be majorly talking about eukaryotic DNA, eukaryotic proteins and majorly about protein structures, determinants, protein experiments and many different uh, aspects of proteins using SwissProt and other uh, sites and uh, we'll also be talking about whole genome databases and how to get uh, the structure of whole gene for a virus, for a bacteria. So let's begin with, uh, in this tutorial, uh, we'll be talking about uh, how to work with eukaryotic DNA and how to look for exons and introns in eukaryotes and how to get uh, the idea of uh, alternative splicing in eukaryotes, which is, a, uh, which is a way to generate many more varieties of protein from a single stretch of gene sequence or single stretch of DNA. So let's begin. So, so, so first of all, uh, for getting the DNA sequence in any kind, we'll be uh, looking for NCBI. So let's move on to NCBI and cite for NCBI. So uh, now we are in, in NCBI and how to get the structure of eukaryotes and all these things. Suppose uh, it's a basic way of getting the eukaryotic structure. You need to go to NCBI as so a National Center for Biotechnology Information. Then uh, from the drop down, you need to select nucleotide. Uh, so so let's let's come in and select nucleotide here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? N for nucleotides. Here comes the nucleotide. We select the nucleotide, and here I'll put I will put the accession number. You can put uh, the name of your gene that you you are going to find, but I will put here uh, the accession number that I want to find. That is A F zero one eight four three zero. 430 this and uh, let's make a search for that and we get uh, the search result here that is homo sapiens utps it's a it's a deoxy utps enzyme or it is the gene is called simply as dot and we'll be talking about more about this dot gene we'll take this gene as an example and we'll talk about that uh, later for more details so here we come uh, and we can see this is an exon exon number 3 here Okay, so so from this, what kind of in information we can get after looking at it? So let's find it out. So first of all, locus. Here comes the locus. Locus is given that 1177 base pair. Locus is the position of a gene in the DNA. And this is the position of a gene. And this whole DNA segment is, is 1177 base pairs long. Now if you look at definition, that means what is the gene? The gene is Homo sapiens DUTPS gene. Uh, it is simply called as dot and this gene is this is the exon number three of that gene so definitely it is having more exons so this is only exon number three that is coding for this dot gene then the accession number is provided version is provided don't need to know much now in, if you go back here the reference number authors uh, what are the journal and where it, this whole sequence is published and everything is provided but the more important thing I want you to focus on here in the bottom, that is the gene. Here you can see the gene and the order is provided in this particular section. As you can see the order, the order is say AF01, this is the accession number. It is telling one number that is less than 1 to 7, 1735. Now what does this actually mean? Now the order of the gene, that means what is the stretch of that gene is actually provided by this particular order. Now this order is giving you the idea that what is the length of the gene. So you can see a less than sign is actually telling you that the gene might begin actually earlier than what is provided. Here it provides beginning from 1 but a less than sign is provided before 1. It is suggesting you that this gene might have started before this, this 1 range or before this first nucleotide. Okay. Now if you get a get greater than sign, that means, so you can see here another example that greater than 1447, that means this gene might end actually 
more nucleotides later than 1447 so it might be 1450 1460 1470 whatever but it might actually may end but uh, so that means uh, people haven't got any exact idea of starting or ending of the gene in those cases they put this less than and greater than sign now anyways as you can see in this gene there are several stretches that less than 1 to 1735 then 1 to 1177 then again for this accession 1 to 45 so what does all these things mean actually we don't know we need to get this idea now meaning of this is that you can see many accession number is provided this is the first accession number and this is the second accession number this is the third accession number so many varieties of accession number is provided now it actually means that for this accession number there is one particular entry for this gene for this accession number there is another entry of that gene for this accession number there is another entry so many accession numbers many different entries from many scientists from different places of the world but the actual idea for getting the whole sequence of the gene is that for this first accession number it, it ranged from 1 to 1735 so the gene might be less than 1 to 1735 of the entry this accession number now if so to get the idea of the whole gene sequence actually what happens in, in lab people uh, are unable to get the whole gene sequence at one go so someone uh, sequence it and, uh, up to a particular level some people other people sequence it some other particular level so all of them feeding their data into the database and database is arranging everything and they give you a data like this and it is telling you now that 1 to 1177 so you get this accession number you get the whole sequence provided by the accession number you join this 1 to 1177 base pair from this accession number you take this one now you join with this accession number entry from 1 to 45 then you take this accession number entry and join 1 to 658 then again you take this accession number entry then join 884 to 954 you join stretch of genes with each other from different accession number entries and after joining all of the small stretch of genes you finally get a large and long stretch of gene and that is going to be the actual gene length for your choice which is the dot gene in this case okay so this is the whole idea that from different accession entries you need to take it and join it uh, to get the whole structure and that's what this ac this data actually telling you now similarly if you look at this is the gene and if you look at the mRNA it will be slightly different because the gene contains introns as well as exons but remember mRNA is in this case obviously this mRNA is processed mRNA and it is having only exons not introns so for example here in the mRNA you can get different arrangements again uh, if this is the accession number entry you can look for less than 282 to 561 and again you can look this accession number 1034 to 1172 and this different stretch of mRNA you again you need to take this data uh, this base pairs and join them to get the whole mRNA sequence there so that's what mRNA is given here and again CDS CDS means the uh, coding sequence the coding sequence will also vary because the coding sequence is actually the exon sequence that is required so you can see here the exon sequence is 282 to 561 of this accession number entry uh, then 1034 to 1172 of this accession number entry so you need to join all this to get the actual coding sequence for that now coding sequence when you join all of these gene sequences and finally code them into protein people get the sequence and that sequence is also provided here and that is given in this inverted uh, region uh, see you can say mtpl so all of this this is a protein sequence actually for that gene that is provided right so mrna is provided cons uh, coding sequence is provided gene sequence is provided so everything is actually provided now if you scroll down a little bit more you can find another mrna another cds and finally another exon here so what does this mean there are two mrna sequences now as you can see here one mrna is here another mrna is here and another cds is here so what does it mean actually you can see another coding sequence is also provided and if you if you look at if you compare between these two coding sequences mtplc mpca so they are different so what does these these things mean actually uh, now it comes down to the important concepts of eukaryotic genes uh, and those those important thing is the exon suffling and exon 
and alternative splicing that means if you have a, a particular so we can see in all this case the gene is only one there only one gene is provided but two mrnas and two coding sequences so we are having one gene two mrnas two coding sequences so what does this mean? It means definitely there is a splicing event and the splicing event is nothing but alternative splicing. And we know that splicing is an event to generate many more variety, many varieties of protein, many different varieties of protein from a single stretch of gene. So the gene remains constant, that is one, but due to the splicing event, it generates two varieties of mRNA, one is this one, another one is this one and these two varieties of mRNA will definitely produce two different varieties of proteins and those two proteins may have certain kind of chemically related features or may not have related features but this is a way to generate more variety in less amount or less region of gene uh, in less region and compact form of uh, getting or compact form of storing the values of the gene or, or storing that uh, that blueprint of life inside the gene. Okay, so that's why you get variety and sometimes also you can get this different mRNAs due to one is for the nuclear uh, variety, another is one is for the mitochondrial gene variety. So that thing is also possible. One mRNA is for the nuclear, another mRNA is for the mitochondrial and you get two different varieties of gene in these two different cases. Right, as you can see here that, that note that uh, dot n this, this gene is provided. In fact, in this case, you can see this second mRNA and I the information that dot N, N means here the nuclear form, that it is spliced nuclear form of the protein similar to UDPS by the gene back accession number provided. So, if you look at this accession number, you get the same type of protein finding there. So, what is this mRNA? Now, you can see this mRNA is provided and here it is written dot M. M means mitochondrial. So, alternatively spliced mitochondrial form of the protein similar to homo sapiens DUTPS encoded by gene back accession is also provided. So what does it mean? You, you just get the idea. So everything literally is written here. Dot M means mitochondrial uh, dot gene. Dot N means nuclear dot gene. But everything is a result of alternative splicing as we've seen in all this case. And finally, this is the gene sequence from 1 to 1177 uh, that is the exact gene length so every gene sequence is provided so this sequence will remain as it is but what varies is simply uh, due to the alternative splicing it will vary in the production of mRNA and obviously the exon will vary and that will lead to the generation of different variety of proteins or polypeptide chains that we have seen before so this is about the eukaryotic uh, DNA and eukaryotic genome it is much more complicated than the prokaryotes and that's how you need to get the information remind you this is the accession number that you want and that's how you can get it so that's it guys and I hope that's helpful thank you